All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, my third video. This is going to be uh, the R Free Art School uh, group study. We are going to be covering hands, uh, wings, and paws. I'm going to go kind of into into depth here. I'm going to start off with the human hand because everything we uh, we do is uh, kind of anthropomorphized. Um, but yeah, so to start off, like, uh, I want to reassure you that if you don't think you can do hands, uh, a lot of people get nervous about it, don't. Um, because it's just, it's just another thing. If, if you find your own way to think about the hand, uh, whether you think about it as, like, a tool or a communication mechanism. A lot of people use their hands to communicate. They throw out gestures. You can't see me throwing my hands about, but I'm gesturing wildly right now. Um, so yeah, people use that as, uh, as this, that, and the other thing. So find your way to think about the hands. The way that I prefer to think about the hand um, is I think of it as a body all its own. So what do I mean by that? So like when when I'm drawing a human body, I imagine things uh, in I imagine it in multiple steps, right? So say for instance, I've got kind of a rib cage action going on here, maybe. I've got a pelvic area, and I just kind of build off of that. Same with the hands. So with the hands. I'm going to start off with a, on a new layer here, and we'll kind of explore the, uh, the major masses of the hand. So uh, this is another method I borrow from Bern Hogarth, where we think of the hand in like three bits. This bit right here is the is the bone that is underneath the pinky finger uh is represents that area of the of the palm it doesn't move a whole lot it kind of shifts back and forth this way and that way a little bit but it doesn't move a whole lot other than that your two primary movers are going to be right underneath the first the first knuckles of your hand there's going to be, uh, I, I imagine there to be, this is this is a way that I imagine it, but there is a, uh, a uh, kind of a pad here. Uh, this represents the underside of all of your fingers. So if I'm drawing the fingers out from this area, it's going to divide roughly into one, two, three, four. And so these are where your fingers would come out. On the palm, there's this area, and this area moves a lot when you're closing your your fist it has like a a back and forth and it's and it's it's attached to the palm because all of your uh your knuckle bones so like say we're looking at this this is a palm view so say this is a is a palm view the actual bones the knuckles in your hand overlap that so like you know Again, I hope you brought your models with you to study. Each of you has a hand model on you, right? <laughs> I don't mean to I don't mean to be ableist humor here, but if you're if you're drawing, it typically means you have hands. So <laughs> Um Yeah. Boy would that be weird to forget as a reference. Alright. Uh yeah, so the the primary knuckles of the of the hand are going to be behind this area of the palm. So that's that's this area right here. So it kind of bends back and forth this way. The third, and probably the, the most prominent mass, is the thumb mass. And I haven't drawn these very well, but they fit together in such a way. So like this is just the palm uh, say this this is this is going to be a right hand obviously because we got the thumb sticking out this way so we've got three separate masses here the side one kind of make that 3d got a top one right here and then we've got our thumb mass right here 
and the thumb mass does a lot of folding too. So like this one doesn't move a lot, but it does have some motion kind of back and forth here. And then this one, if you're if you're studying your own hand, this has a ton of motion. So like we can splay the thumb out, you know, completely to the side here, or we can have it facing like straight forward. It's got a huge kind of swing of motion because we're imagining the fingers on here and it's kind of, and it's the it'd be the same with these fingers you know the fingers swing in here and the thumb can swing in here and then if you have them both facing towards you you've got a hand that's can can control a puppet i've been pinged oh no that's a personal message okay all right um yeah so kind of practicing like the the kind of breaking it down again we've got the pinky kind of mass the thumb kind of mass it's just kind of shaped like a like a wedge or a triangle and then you can kind of like ignore this there's there's like an empty space here uh as far as like you know there are actual knuckles and and so forth that go into the hand but when it comes to to movement and drawing the hand as as an artist you don't necessarily need to pay a whole lot of attention to this middle part because what it does like even in the extended palm there's kind of like a a bowl shape like if you stretch your fingers all the way back and hold your hand out like that there's still a, a divot there a bowl shape so that's kind of what this empty space is is representative of so there is there are some there are the three major masses of the palm and the fingers stick out of it and the thumb sticks out of this one of course but let me uh so that's that's a useful way to think about it and as far as like in terms of movement of the hand these two primarily are your swing are your opposing opposing digits so to speak and then this mass over here takes up the rest of the hand doesn't move a whole lot uh, but it does from time to time all right uh, next up I'm gonna take all of this and just kind of shove it in the side here so that we can continue to see that all right now I'm going to teach you some uh, proportions and measurements so if you saw my video on the heads you'll be familiar with the square grid squarish proximate guidelines of two by three right two this way three this way this makes a human head how this relates to the hand is that a hand on a human at least is approximately let me if I split this in half and then I split it in quarters if I split this in half and I split it in quarters the hand is approximately as tall as three quarters of the human head so we got a length there and I'm gonna draw like a, a bigger one so like th three quarters head equals hand length and then for the width of the hand uh, it's gonna be from the chin to the bottom of the nose so approximately along this lower third line here so if I take this and I kind of translate it over this way boom we've got kind of a, a rough estimate of, a, of the proportions of a hand in relation to the human head now I'm going to draw the hand like all on its own so everything that I'm about to do uh, in here is supposed to fit within this this area right here okay so say we've got just a line start with just a line we got points A and B say and if we divide this approximately in half C 
This is going to be where the first knuckle of the middle finger comes out. So we can kind of draw a circle coming through that. And again, this is stuff that'll that'll come with with practice as well. All right. Uh, now, uh, for the 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 first and ring finger knuckles, this midsection right here. See, I've drawn a circle around it. The next knuckle, or the it, this is going to be for the knuckles of the of the uh, index and ring finger. The knuckle comes down is like a circle of its own halfway down from this first one and then it's the same over here so we've got the halfway point of our first knuckle we've got our second and third ones right here and like continuing on with our our third hand thing here if I cut this one in half the pinky knuckle is typically about there and this provides kind of like a base curve of knuckles of the hand, uh, and this will this will extend towards the towards the bottom here. Oh, down here we got more of the wrist area, and it'll take a roughly squarish shape. Some people prefer to describe it as like uh, pentagonal, because you'll have your thumb bulge there and so they'll count this as like the one two three four five sides of a pentagon type of thing however you like to do it is your thing so like I've got a I've got here and here halfway knuckle right here knuckle right here knuckle right here knuckle right here uh, continuing with the middle finger because I just wanted to flip everyone off no um so between points A and C here we've got another bisection right and so we call this D this is going to be the first knuckle and it seems kind of long uh, I know it seems kind of long but this is approximately where you will find the first knuckle and then the second one from that is going to be another bisect right here so we've got first second third knuckles and the fingertip is going to come out here so I just kind of draw a fingertip right out there and a knuckle here, a knuckle there. If we want kind of a bone structure, we kind of swing inwards with a line like that. Here, here, and here. We'll provide kind of a, a bony, like if you want to draw just bone hands, this is a great way to do that. So we've got our digits right here and they just kind of like the knuckles kind of bulge right there so this this will this will be where that like um, if I'm drawing out the the pads of, of a finger they're going to come down here oh and approximately so if you want to know where the the skin joins the the knuckles here approximately from this point right here uh, let's try and divide this C and D into thirds so let's say like there and right there about on the first third is approximately where the skin is going to be and again hands are different this is going this is going to be a rough measure for everything but that's the middle that's the middle finger and then from the middle finger you can figure out all of the other fingers so again hands are different but typically your uh, your first finger is not going to come up much longer than that first knuckle right there. So you've got a place right here, and then boom, we can draw another line back to our first knuckle there, and we can bisect it. Boom, boom, and then draw our first and third knuckles again. Any questions so far? We pretty good? Okay. Again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. 
So we've got that there, and if your ring finger is the same length as your uh, uh, as your index finger, you're going to be doing about the, the same thing over here. Mine's a little bit taller. It actually comes about right here. Is going to be the tip. And then so I can do this again. Bisect, bisect, knuckle, knuckle, bone structure, bone structure. And then the little finger usually doesn't come up above the last knuckle of right here. So this will be a section, bisect, bisect. And boom, we've got four fingers of the hand in roughly the correct spots, you know. Like like I said, hands are going to be different. Some people's, you know, uh, index and ring fingers are the exact same. Some are not. Uh, it's it's all, it, it, it differs from person to person. Okay, so from this C area here between C and B here, we're going to figure out the thumbnail. So if we bisect between C and B here, and we go out this way, We've kind of got a spacing of knuckles built up here already, right? So we do we do say like the width of one more, and then we've got a thumb knuckle, basically. And so that will come up. And then using this kind of curved guideline right here, we can kind of swing up and down. And this is not an exact inference by any means. But we can kind of swing down and say like, oh, okay, this matches up with, with here, and then we'll have another joint comes up approximately here. And these will be, your, your, uh, your thumb only has the, the two knuckles protruding from it. So it's going to be right there and right there into the, into the base of the hand. So if you're drawing your thumb, usually has a pad over this, and usually there's uh, one over here, and no wait, I've got this figured wrong. That thumb is should have a third joint here. Got a joint here, a tip there. There we go. That's better. And so the big, uh, the big um, area from over here is going to be manifest right there. There's going to be your palm reading, and then you make it an M if you're getting all fancy right there. And there you go. That's palm reading. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see here. As far as for um, figuring out the thumb, uh, it's kind of I'm kind of intuiting it right now. Um, so I've got what I know is that like you've got uh, the the knuckle that comes out from the midsection of C and B. Those points right here comes out right here to form point G. As far as exactly how far that comes out, uh, again, it'll vary from, from person to person. This is just a very rough kind of estimation of it. And then as you're drawing digits, they kind of pad out, but they get smaller near the top. So they're not, you know, exactly shaped like a sausage. <laughs> they come out. bigger bigger and wider at the base so yeah finishing that out will get us approximately the proportions of the hand coming back remembering where the skin attaches right there it's gonna drop down right there all right
Human hand. Ta-da! It's a bit it's a bit complex, but it's like drawing a body all like I said, I like to think of it as like it's a body to itself, which is why many people find it like super complex. Because if you think if you're thinking of hands as a beginner, you usually have something like a hand symbol from like the stop signs or you know, walk don't walk signs or something like that. If I curl up the knuckles there, it's click this hyperlink. <laughs> yeah, you want to try not to think so much like that. That's useful as like a, a stylization thing or a signage thing. Not so much when you're trying to replicate uh, the... If, if you're trying to approximate a realistic implementation of, of a hand or paw here. All right, cool. That takes us that far. Gonna shrink that down a bit. Is there a question or just random noise? Oh, I'm sneezing. Oh, okay. totally fine. Bless you. Bless your face. <laughs> God, that reference old. That is a very old reference. It's a very... Kinda, it uh, kind of aged bad. Yeah, 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 it aged rather poorly. Anyway, that aside, okay, so we've got, um, this, this here is a palm view. If we're going to take it from, uh, the side view, um, I'm going to return to one of the previous, uh, videos. Well, lessons from a previous video. Let me bring out a ruler. Let me bring out a parallel line ruler. And I'm going to use projection. Uh, okay. All right, and this hand is kind of like splayed out in an unnatural fashion. You typically won't draw hands this way, but this is a good way to get a hang on the proportions, right? It's kind of like I covered in the head. You're not always going to draw it from the front on mugshot view. You're going to draw it from the, from the side as well. So if we've got the general, the general shape of the hand is going to be, whoops, let me turn that ruler off for a second. The general shape of the hand is going to be... It's still doing that. Alright. General shape of the hand is going to be a wedge. From the side view. It's going to get thinner as it goes up. So it's kind of like a, a, a spatula cook pancakes with it. So top here is going to be the the middle finger and then we trace the height of the index finger. It's going to come out here. Thumb is going to come out here. And the thumb will usually um, connect along the the lower side here. Like if it's if it's splayed out perfectly flat this is what it's going to look like. It's just going to look weird and not necessarily natural. And then because the other two members are blocked from this, we don't really get a sense of, of those so much. And maybe this wedge is a little, a little too thick. It's going to be a little thinner. More like actual spatula. And you gotta remember where your knuckles are, of course. Approximately there. But yeah, so there's a, a profile view of a splayed out thing. That's not necessarily very useful. But if you...
Sorry about that. Uh, if you're uh, drawing the hand in a more relaxed shape, uh, I help. It helps me to remember the shape of the letter D, or something like that. We'll have a big one, and then we'll have kind of a little one. And along your big one will be your fingers, along with big swoop right here. We'll get kind of a spiral-ish pattern going on here. And remembering the different lengths. So for a curved hand, we'll get this. For a more uh, relaxed hand, I should say. And this is not fitting to my measurements at all. I gotta remember the joints. That's a funny thing. So, like the from uh, from the the knuckles of the hand kind of bisect, but from the inside of the hand, they kind of mark in uh, uh, weirdly close thirds. So yeah, there's a more relaxed hand, maybe. And as you practice and kind of drill the 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 hands proportions, uh, you can get a sense. You can get a sense. Uh, again, it's like the this two thirds box here, right? Eventually, you don't really need it. You know the proportions well enough that you can just go straight ahead to drawing the thing. So again, thinking of the major masses, let's try and draw something interesting in like uh, in three dimensions here, right? So let's say that this is our kind of top section. We can divide that into into four, roughly, and then we've got a thumb section right about here. We've got the side section right here. We got each finger coming out. Sometimes it's helpful if you're drawing something in, in three dimensions, to uh, the hand in three dimensions, is to figure out where is your pinky finger and where is your thumb. So if you've got your location of your thumb, you've got the location of your pinky finger, you can kind of fill in the rest of the gaps. And this is a very unnatural bend of hand. This is a, the hand of a villain or something like that, I don't know. This is a very unnatural bend, uh, precisely because the, the pinky is extending out. It's the opposite behavior in reality. When you're curling your hand into a fist, it starts with the pinky. So hand positions like this are really unnatural. But then we've got kind of the basic shape of a hand that we can flesh out. And say, hey, I've got a hand in a weird kind of three-dimensional shape. And you can take it from a, from a number of, of angles. Oh, um, should come down to the, the wrist a little bit. Maybe talk a little bit about that. So from the, from the hand, you've got, uh, and you'll, you'll see this in like skinnier people. I don't have this too much, but you'll see this where uh, they'll have kind of bulges on the side. Those are your radius and ulna. And where you can tell your radius, you can tell where your radius is, it's next to the thumb because the thumb is 
Rad. It's awesome to have thumbs. So the radius is always on the thumb side of the hand. And this is the ulna. No one cares about ulna. I'm just kidding. We love you, ulna. But these are the two bones that connect back to the to the arm. And just anatomy is super interesting in general. So the ulna is your is your elbow hook. And then the radius is um, the 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 pivot points. So like it's the radius that allows you to turn your hand from uh, palm view to side view. So you've got like the palm facing in front of you and then you turn it to karate chop someone. You're using your radius there. And then those bones will kind of crisscross. So out in this position they'll be kind of splayed out. But like when they're turned like that they'll be more of a of, of a crisscross from the But yeah, just a cool thing to keep in mind when you're drawing the rest of the uh, for of the of the lower forearm. And uh, gosh, arms could be a topic of study for a whole nother day. Anyway, I'm about halfway through. Thank you so much for your patience. I will break into the fun furry stuff now. <laughs> so pulling back up my reference. This. So let's go ahead and look at let's go ahead and start looking at pause. Let's go ahead and start with kind of your basic it's not you know breeds and stuff are gonna vary, so all of these um, all of these guidelines will be different. You know, find good reference, study it, make make proportion guides especially for characters that you're going to draw over and over again, your primary sonar or whatever. Uh, but the shape of a general paw, we can kind of see, has this kind of hexagonal. Some people prefer it pentagonal. That'll keep kind of the claws right there. But like the paw itself will be kind of a more pentagonal structure. So if we start just from the bottom. We come more like this. And then we can we can kind of subdivide it into four areas. Have it like here. Pads here, 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 and here. And then on the bottom, especially of a canine, it's gonna have this primary up right here and there. So that will be a canine paw. Feline paw. We've got um, we've got an example of a house cat down here and an example of a tiger right here. They're pretty close. So like the the toe beans or whatever are going to be much larger on the big kitty than they are on the small kitty. But their shape is going to be, is not going to be exactly the same. Uh, it's probably going to lean more towards that uh, hexagonal, but with like a wider base. So let's take, a, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Like we did with the last one. Oh my gosh, stop. Okay. My computer is being nice to me by reminding me that I am a person with responsibilities. Okay, yeah, we got kind of a hexagon, hexagon, hexagonal, hexagon shape. We got a hexagon shape going on here. So if I bring that back up here to right up, we're gonna have a wide base and kind of tall bottom sides. Come up here on this, and then over here. And then we can do we can do pretty much the same thing, bisect it into into four quadrants. Pop pads here, 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 and here. And then this is gonna come out underneath. 
come out this way. Yeah. So we can see that there are like um, structural differences between like this. This is going to be like your your dog, and this is going to be a, a tiger, obviously. So they're going to be a bit different. And then for the cat right here, this this is uh this is not really the best angle for it, but it's going to have a similar, maybe slimmer profile because they're not as big, honking paws as tigers. So we've got this, 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 that, and then we've still got the paw filling out there. So there are some useful guides for drawing the uh, the paws of like feral creatures, and you can kind of take. Uh, examples of that back to the hand. So like say I'm drawing a a hand from from memory here. If I'm going something if I'm going some for something with a little more like furry look, I'll typically thicken the fingers quite a bit. Put those big paw pads on the edge there. And then maybe we've got something similar going on here. It's a more stretched out shape. And this is where, you know, things will get interpretive, you know, because we've got all of the structures from from here already, but a lot of empty space in the hand. So when it comes down to it, there's a lot of creativity going. If you're like, eh, maybe that's not enough, or maybe, eh... Maybe I don't want my paw pads like that. Maybe my paw pads are going to look a little more human-like. And so we'll have like a big... Th and we'll have a, a callback to the, the prominent shapes up here. Maybe. And get something more like that. It's a potential possibility. It's uh, It's all very up for for interpretation how exactly you want to draw uh, paw pads on anthro characters. So be creative with it, you know? Look at your reference, come back to your thing, come back to your knowledge of the of the hand and make what you what you think is a good compromise, you know? Suddenly I'm not liking this so much. Too human. Gonna bring it back here. I don't know, however you want to do it. But yeah. So there's pause in kind of like a, a general sense. Canine, feline, and so forth. Alright. Gonna move on to... Uh, any questions before I move on, actually? Had someone leave, that's okay. Everyone good? Feel free to type something. Cool. Anyone else? Oh, hang on. Cool. All right. I'm I'm glad to know this is going fairly well. Good. Good, 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 good. All right. So now I'm going to kind of move on um let's say here to to wings. So this is a screenshot I pulled from a smarter everyday video comparing bat and uh and bird wings. So we've got some fundamentally different structures here. So like um as a quick well let's let's kind of go into the the arm a little bit because it's a it's an important part of of making sure you know the hand. I'm going to what am I going to do? 
I'm gonna move these aside. Gotta move those there. Gotta move this over here. Save this. Move it over here so that we can have a bit more space to discuss arms. Okay, so on a human, your arm attachment, um, most people think of it of it starting at the deltoid. Uh, more deeply, it connects to the the clavicle. Um, I showed earlier before I started making this recording, but um, it starts with the clavicle that attaches uh, the uh, it's the shoulder bone connected to the humerus. Very very basic idea right now. Shoulder connected to the humerus. Humerus connected up to the radius and ulna, and then you've got your hand location down here somewhere. And the general size, you're going to remember the biceps. And then for the lower arm, it kind of flares out a little bit more. And these don't, these kind of overlap is what they'll do. kind of merge into each other. So we've got the the, the deltoid upper arm, uh, lower arm, and these are all connected to the pectorals along the side. Let's have that as a stand-in for the pectorals right there. Thank you. Oh no, I returned that. We're good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we got um, they they connect out to the pectoralis major. Actually, that's gonna be more down here because that's way too far up. Anyway. All right. So we've got this major structure as far as it when it comes to the these major structures when it comes to the wing, right? So we've got the shoulder joint right there. We've got an elbow joint right there and we got a wrist joint right here for the bird wing. And then the bird wing, you, you can kind of see that there's really not much to the to the bird wing. It comes out there, it's got you know, it's it's kind of nubby. Like where bird wings are great in their control of uh, feathers. They got tons of like little tiny muscles here that that can control like each individual feather. But yeah, so that's how it, it attaches the same way an arm does to, to like a human body. It just comes further down in kind of a in kind of a letter D shape. It can. Again, birds vary. Consult your reference. Moving on to the bat limb, though, you'll see that there are way more joints here. That's because the bat wing is more like a, more like a hand. So we've got our shoulder joint, elbow joint, wrist joint, and then five digits. One, two, three, four, five. Each with two more knuckles on them. And again, those come back to the body. And really neat things to learn about these these uh, these creatures as well. So something worth noting is that the the upper arm is going to be very short, and then everything gets kind of longer from there. So like we've got the forearm is quite long, but then the primary 
This is going to be like the middle finger digit on this bat. But that one's way longer. So it comes down in steps. One, two, three. And it looks like... I'm going to guess that each one is approximately... two-thirds of the next one. So it looks like this one would be two-thirds that. Maybe not. Oh no, I haven't drawn the third right there. One, two, three. Yeah, roughly. And then if I do this here, Eh, roughly. A lot of analysis, a lot of guessing. But yeah. And then especially with, um, especially with bat wings, you're going to have all of those digits there. Uh, they're going to curve around in space kind of the same way. So, like, if I'm drawing, like, a shortcut for a bat wing, I might do this, right? But this shape doesn't contain the same complexity as a hand, which really it should, if I'm going to do it more, more accurately. But, you know, some short, sometimes shortcuts are appropriate, and sometimes they're not. Use your discretion. All right. Um, are there any other questions? I'm I'm kind of low on the on other material to cover here. Let me see. Yeah. If there are any other questions, you can field them now. Um, otherwise, we're we're I'm pretty much done with the with the presentation part, and we can just kind of stick around and and chat and draw together and discuss what we've learned. But yeah, presuming there are no more questions, thank you all for coming to this part of the study. I'm going to end the recording now. Uh, and this will be uploaded to YouTube uh, probably sometime tomorrow. I stay up too late if I try to do these things in the same day. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Thank you for coming. Again, good good turnout. For this topic in particular, it's it's kind of a tough one. Uh and there's more to there's more to cover really. It's just I was not as as well prepared this time, unfortunately. But yeah. We got one more question, maybe? I'll answer this question after the recording. Oh wait, no wait, Kimian. Start out simplified, learning major shape, or just go full anatomy. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, start out with the start out with the basic shape. Whereas when I when I when I came out here, like this is this is enough. Like you know, this right here is is uh, I don't know at least twenty five different parts or something like that. No, it's going to be, um, this is 15 different parts, you know. Don't, don't stress yourself out too much. Focus on the basic forms. Like, um, 
the the three major masses that I showed here you know if that's the only thing that you that you master over the next week you'll be miles ahead of your peers you know and then go later on go into into the anatomy you know come back and watch this video and and watch the um, watch the way I break down the proportions again you know um, if you just it, like like I said focus focus on the basics as a beginner there's no reason to bog yourself down I mean if you're if you're excited to learn anatomy that's one thing but it can get kind of heavy as a beginner so my suggestion is to to go focus on the basic shapes but you know uh, s scale it up to your to your excitement level if you're like okay I've got kind of these basic shapes down let's let's go back to the fingers yeah definitely come back you know there's always more to learn later no it's fine if you couldn't keep up that's that's totally fine there was a lot to to cover here like I said there are, there are entire books written on this on this subject and and more I've got kind of a, a small library going on here which I refer to constantly so build that out as a beginner I've got some book recommendations feel free to ask me later oh yeah great question thank you so much I think with that I'm gonna end the recording and uh, you feel free to stick around or or go your separate ways I'm gonna hang out here for just a little bit longer uh, for those of you viewing on YouTube thank you and have a great day. Keep drawing. Bye.